Truly, the demons become angrier in land before the resurrection of Christ. The devils are sickened, so they're coming out and tearing up. Zelensky gave carte blanche to radicals, the remnants of Nazis, crowds of demons to expel monks from shrines and forbid parishioners to pray. Kiev pictures Klavra. The schismatics took away their factory chart and the Assumption Cathedral of the Lavra and held a rock concert in the holy place calling for the killing of Muscovites, allegedly with the blessing of Christ. For more than a week, believers continued to pray at the walls of the shrine against the churches to be turned into places for exhibitions and rock concerts. People quietly recite the creeds and acathists. From time to time, they declare Christ is risen. They are opposed by those whom the Ukrainian government considers to be truly patriots and guardians of the Ukrainian spirit. It is symbolic that men in such cloth came to expel believers. Do you have a moment to talk about God, our Savior, and the Satan? I am the Satan. I am personally the Satan. I support him. Asmodeus, Satanus. Lucifer, Belial, Asmodeus, Satanus. Are you going to say me something here for glory to Christ? You scream that the Christ is rising, idiot. You were the idiot and remind them. I am one of those who honor many gods, not just Christ. I honor the old gods you curse. Ukraine above all. Ukraine above all. You have to get out of here by the right of law because your contract has ended. One move and everything will explode on them and everyone will die. At the beginning of the year, cynic brazenly and bypassing every conceivable and unthinkable law, Zelensky decided to expel the canonical Orthodox Church from Ukraine because it is Muscovite. By March 30, the confrontation between the official authorities and the Lavra reached a peak, the deadline by which, according to the instructions of officials, the Orthodox have to leave the monastery have expired. As you understand, neither the monks nor their parishioners consented to it. 220 people of the brethren were thrown into the street, many, by the way, lived there for 30 years, and they have nowhere to go. The Ministry of Culture decided to make an inventory of the relics of the saints, including Nestor, who wrote the tale of bygone years, Yuri Dolgoruki. It is even terrible to imagine what destiny under the current government awaits the relics of the saints who founded Moscow. Parishioners did not allow officials to enter the Lavra, and once again they turned out to be Muscovites with anti-Ukrainian sentiments. That is, a person went to the same church for decades, has the same passport and speaks Ukrainian, pays taxes to the country and even fought or is fighting at the front for Ukraine and the Kiev regime. You are screaming in our faces that we're Muscovites. Am I a Muscovite? Am I a Muscovite? I shed my blood for you. And then, all of a sudden, he becomes an enemy because he's not there. The priest, by the way, is also Ukrainian. They incited such thugs against women, children and the elderly. I think they all should be kicked, treated radically, just kicked out of here. And there is no one to come now and burn down this Elm's house. It is unclear why the brave Ukrainians defend their independence at the Lavra and not at the front. They were called here by the pro-government radical Karas, who received an order to swing and provoke because the SWAT unit will enter the Lavra and the Europeans need a picture. The task for us in this case is to act as a catalyst to further exacerbate the fact they have behaved like aggressors and beasts, because if Alpha goes there to take this lover, then this older aggressive behavior will all help a lot. 
so that everyone, including the Europeans, would say that this is some kind of aggressive terrorist group and not monks. The governor of the Kiev Pechersk Lavra called on Zelensky to come to his senses. Mr. President, I tell you and your gang that our tears will not fall to the ground, they will fall on your head. Do you think that by coming into power on our backs you can do that? The Lord will not forgive you or your family. Zelensky thought a little bit and all he managed to figure out was arresting Metropolitan Pavel for aiding Russian aggression and chained the vicar of the Lavra in an electronic bracelet. For there are no other problems in Ukraine. However, this path was paved by his predecessor. It does not even sound strange, but the government, which were born by the Sabbath with sacrifices on the Maidan, immediately took up the rape of the church. The chocolate magnate has such a crazy idea to create a church named after Poroshenko in Ukraine. There was a self-styled patriarch Filaret Akadinisenko, who with the blessing of Petro was supposed to unite the orthodox confessions of the country. And the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew in 2019 in Istanbul issued a Thomas for autocephality, independence in simple terms. The truth of independence is very conditional. All imported church affairs are now decided by Ukraine after bowing to the Istanbul elder. What Petro promised to join turned out to be a discord. Two orthodox churches, the UOC and the OCU, were formed in Ukraine. The letters are the same, but the difference is enormous. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church, headed by Metropolitan Anufri, is traditional. It's also the Lavra and most believers pray in its parishes. And the OCU is a non-canonical religious organization led first by the self-proclaimed Filaret and now by Epiphany Dumenko. Sabbaths are held in these new churches. The schismatics, by the way, were recognized neither by the international community nor by the parishioners, who considered the Orthodox Church of Ukraine a pro-government party and a purely political institution. Institution. I already said it, shoot us, kill, do whatever you want, but leave us alone, we will not go to the OCU, realize this, we are not going to shift our allegiance to it, because it's a political organization. The chocolate magnet gave way to the comic and the seizure of orthodox churches did not stop. The leaders of Ukrainian society, discarding all decorum, call for the burning of churches. Allegedly, it warms the soul. You go to the church, you hear the Moscow ringing, that's it, set it on fire, it's normal, there's nothing wrong with it. They listened to him on the night of March 28. The unknown person threw Molotov cocktails at the Orthodox Church of the Ternopoly region. The throne and the altar in the Church of the Blessed Virgin burned out. A church was burned in the Nikolaev region on April 5. Not only Metropolitan Pavel was arrested, a priest of Sumy region, Metropolitan of the Cherkasy Diocese, was detained in the Wolf, 50 radicals broke up into the Cathedral of St. George during the service. In the Khmelnytsky church, a radical soldier threw off the gospel during the prayer liturgy. Radicals in Balaklavas poisoned clergymen and parishioners with gas in Ivano-Frankivsk. The captured churches are handed over the OCU, and the prayers they are very different. They forgot to sing that they are not afraid of God. It seems to me that there was a unique chance when everything could be solved very quickly and painlessly during the first three or six months of the war. Back then, you could just physically clean up a lot of pro-Russian people, but today is a little more complicated. But then again, a little harder doesn't mean impossible. And today we must legally and firmly walk along this path with legal motivation. The church is separate from the state. Moreover, no religion can be recognized by the state as mandatory. This is the constitution of Ukraine. Perhaps the Ukrainian comic for four years did not have time to study the constitution. Comrades from the SBU, tell your leader, Article 35, published on the website of the President of Ukraine.